Hey guys! Um, so I was told that some of you wanted a bit of a kind of makeup tutorial since you guys are starting to do a dark tour and it is your first dark tour ever. Congratulations on the journey you're about to go on. Um, so I decided that I would film a little instructional thing about dark tour makeup um, and tips and tricks that I've learned in the 13 years that I've been doing dark tours. So um, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you get started is if you have long hair that likes to get in your face like mine, you're gonna wanna pull it back and you're gonna wanna get a headband. Mine has um, bunny ears because um, it's adorable and why shouldn't your headband have bunny ears? Um, but any headband will do, um, a clip to pull your hair back, whatever gets it out of your face really is gonna be the best thing because the most annoying thing is trying to do your makeup where you've got like little pieces of hair stuck all over your face, okay? Um, before I started filming, I put on primer. I used the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. If you guys like makeup, then that will make sense to you. And if you don't, that's fine. Um, it's not necessary to do good makeup to have primer, especially for a dark tour. Um, all that primer does is it helps your makeup stick to your face longer. Um, it keeps your skin from absorbing the makeup too fast. In a dark tour, when you are supposed to look scary and you're supposed to look a little gross, there is nothing wrong with your skin eating some of your makeup. There's nothing wrong with it looking a little messy. That's what we want. We want messy, right? Um, I also filled in my eyebrows because my eyebrows are embarrassing. Okay, so if your eyebrows are not embarrassing, then you can leave them alone and that's totally fine. Um, I'm gonna start with, um, I have a tinted serum foundation. Um, once again, foundation is not necessary for, for you to do good makeup for a dark tour. I personally have always found that using um, a foundation or having like a foundation base helps your makeup stay longer, um, kind of like your primer, and helps make sure that everything kind of goes on smoothly. Um, but obviously, if you don't have access to a foundation, especially if you don't have one that's necessarily in your shade, um, you don't have to do this. It's not required. Um, the one that I use is very, very lightweight, and uh, it doesn't really do much other than kind of even out some of the redder parts of my skin tone. Um, so if you don't have a foundation, the show must go on, and the show will go on. You don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna blend really quickly because frankly, I don't wanna be doing a lot of cuts in this video because then I'm gonna have to edit it. And that is personally, um, that's gonna require looking at myself a little too much and I'm not really a fan. So you guys are going for kind of dark under eye circles. You wanna look um, a little zombie-like right? Um, so there are a couple things that you can do to kind of emphasize this. Um, it's going to depend on number one, how close people are going to get to you, um, how, how dead you want to look, I guess. Um, so if you are a little bit like me and you're already kind of pale, you don't really have to do this. Um, if you would like to look a little bit more dead, I will always encourage you to take um, a concealer. Concealers are generally like a lighter shade than your foundation. We use it to brighten parts of our face, right? Um, but if you take a foundation or you take a concealer and you just kind of liberally put it on your face, um, it's gonna be lighter than your skin tone. It's gonna make you look paler. Um, and sometimes when we're going for kind of a zombie look, what we want is that that kind of Tim Burton sick color to our skin, right? We're not trying to look pretty here. That's not the goal. So I'm going to blend this. I don't blend concealer nearly as much as I should, but that's a problem for another day, you know? Anyway, if you're pale like me, you really don't need concealer. I mostly did that for the sake of the video. Um, I already look sick. So... Okay, you guys didn't see that, but I almost flicked my beauty blender right into my cup of coffee. We're just gonna move that. Okay, 
the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make your face look sickly skinny and kind of hollowed out. Okay. Um, I have contour because I do my makeup, right? But if you guys are not working with a whole lot of basic makeup stuff like contour concealer, things like that, um, where is it? You can just use kind of eyeshadow. I have a couple of eyeshadow palettes here. Um, you can use like, I have this, <laughs> ignore how gross this palette looks. I have this kind of grayish color here. Okay, you don't want like a pretty bronzer to make your face look all pretty and you look all sun-kissed. No, you want to look disgusting. Okay, so what you're going to do with this gray is you're just going to pat, pat. Okay, say it with me, pat. Okay, don't swipe. Did not blend that well. Don't swipe quite yet. Okay, when you're starting, look at that. <laughs> when I tilt my head like this. Um, when you're starting with makeup like this, you're going to want to pat only because you want to be able to put it in the place that you really need the makeup. Okay. You can blend, you can cover, you can swipe all you want when you have the makeup where you want it. Put the makeup where you want it first. What I do, and this is not too difficult for me to figure out because I already have a really bony face. Okay, I've got cheekbones that are going out like six feet in either direction. I put this gray underneath my cheekbones. So the little like pointy parts of your face right here, I put it underneath. It just emphasizes that shadow and it makes it look like the cheekbones are sticking out even more than before. All right. Um, one thing you do need to be aware of if you're using eyeshadow is eyeshadow blends differently than like contour or bronzer will. So you're going to probably need to blend a little bit more. But the good thing about eyeshadow is most eyeshadow now is very like stackable. It creates like a buildable color when you continue to add more on top of it. So if you blend a lot of it out the first time, there's nothing wrong with that. You can go back and you can add some more. Um, and if people aren't going to be super, super, super close to you, it doesn't really matter if you blend it really well or not. You can just kind of move on. See? Take a look at that. Okay. You guys aren't at a great angle for me right now. Well, you're at a fine angle, but I'm looking at the <laughs> mirror over here. Okay. You can also shadow out your jaw a little bit. Again, this is this part right here, optional. It's not necessary. Um, I like it. I think it makes you look bonier. I think it makes you look like a Tim Burton character and we should all embrace the Tim Burton-y look every now and then, right? Okay. We're gonna call that done. <laughs> okay, the best part about looking like a creepy little zombie is doing your eyes. Okay, so if you're working with anything that's creamy, not necessarily like a powder eyeshadow, I have this, I'm gonna be working with this black one right here. Um, if it's creamy, I always encourage you to use your fingers, wash your hands first and wash your hands after. But um, using your fingers means that you can kind of blend creams better. If you're working with powder, you use a brush. Um, you can't really blend powder really well with your fingers. So what I'm going to do, because I know that this is a pretty pigmented eyeshadow, I'm just going to do like a smidge here, a smidge there. Look at that. Disgusting, right? And then, actually, I'm just going to blend with the same brush. Why not? It doesn't matter. And you know what? We'll go with our fingers a little bit. No, I still don't like how that blends. Blends, it's all right. Blend, 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 blend. Don't be afraid of getting that makeup on your nose here and don't be afraid to blend farther out than you thought, okay? Because again, we can stack color, okay? So you're gonna want the black color on this inside of your under eye right here. And you, if you want your eyes to look more hollow, you want them to look bigger than they were, you're gonna wanna put it in your crease right here, okay? This is a very, this is a basic makeup thing. Um, I don't have really big eyes and I personally like to make my eyes look bigger than they are, especially because my glasses kind of make them look small. So 
you can put some black right here. You don't have to go too heavy handed. Um, and then blend, tap, pat, do whatever you gotta do. At this point, we're gonna be looking a little bit like a chimney sweep. Okay, trust the process, we're not finished. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this black and we're gonna move into, we're gonna move into a little bit of purple, all right? We want to have, I'm, gonna, I'm using this Jeffree Star palette. I don't like him, but I like the color. Um, anyway, um, we want the bruises under our eyes, or rather we want the bags under our eyes to look a little bit like bruises. Okay, that when we are really, really tired, um, when we're like chronically sleep deprived, we rub our eyes a lot, we touch our eyes a lot. Um, we're probably lacking in some other vitamins, nutrients, et cetera, et cetera. That hollows out your eyes and that bruises them a little bit. So we want a little bit of a purple tint. You do not have to go too heavy handed on purple, okay? I'm, I'm probably gonna go heavy handed on purple uh, because that's just how it's turning out over here. I personally have always loved um, Ben Nye. Ben Nye has this kind of, we call it a bruise palette. I don't know what it's actually called, to be honest. Um, it's like a little wheel of cream makeup. And it's got a black, a brown, a purple, and this like faded pink. Um, and the colors all together really create some realistic looking bruises. And they look really disgusting, which is exactly what you want. Okay, so you're gonna take that purple and you're gonna blend that into your black. You can't see a whole lot of it right now. There's nothing wrong with that. It's really a hint. We want a hint. We don't want everybody to be like, you wearing purple eyeshadow under your eyes right now? No, we want a, oh my God, what's wrong with you? Kind of look, you know what I mean? You can also put a little bit of that over your eyelid. Again, you don't have to go too heavy, especially with a faint purple. Um, this is gonna make your eyes look really sick. Like, I don't mean that in a slang, like your eyes are gonna look sick, brah. Like, no, you're gonna look like you need to go to the hospital, okay? Uh, and that's what we want. We want people to be worried about our well-being and also frightened. We can do both, okay? So, once we get some of that purple, on but oh I look disgusting okay once we get that we're gonna move on to the same gray that I use to hollow out my cheekbones a little bit this one okay um try not to use eyeshadows that have sparkles because those are gonna catch the flashlight light and that's gonna look really funny um Coming as someone who only had black eyeshadow with sparkles in it for a lot of years, um, try to find one that doesn't have sparkles. We're gonna take that gray and we're just gonna, we're just gonna go a little ham with it. Let it, let it fly. Again, when we're working with this color that we're gonna be adding quite a bit of, tap first and then blend and then blend like your life depends on it. Blend until your arm wants to fall off. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So, if you wear makeup regularly, at some point in this process, you're gonna say, oh my God, I look disgusting. I hate this, I'm doing it wrong. Um, it's because your ultimate goal when doing makeup for this is different than your ultimate goal when you're wearing makeup on a regular day. You're not trying to look pretty. If you look pretty when you're done, you didn't do it right. And you need to go back and make yourself look ugly again. The dark tour is not for anybody who wants to look pretty. Do you wanna look pretty? You're in the wrong show. Definitely in the wrong show, okay? So, this doesn't look too bad, okay? So, what you wanna do when you're at this point, you've raccooned your eyes quite a bit, you've got dirty fingers, um, you look gross, love it. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find a friend and you're gonna wanna tell them, turn your phone camera, I turn your phone flashlight on, shine it on your face. Most of the shadows that you put on are probably going to disappear. The harsh light of a flashlight is gonna wash you out. That means all of this that we put on, some of the lighter colors here on the edges, those are gonna completely disappear. And what you're only gonna have left is the darker stuff. 
if they turn on that flashlight and a lot of this disappears, you're going to want to go over it with the same colors again, get another layer in there. It's you're going to be building the color, the intensity of the color. If it looks a little silly when you're standing in your normal classroom, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's what it's going to look like under the flashlight that matters. You want to look foul, disgusting, please take me to the hospital kind of spooky. Okay, so since we're trying to go for please take me to the hospital, I'm going to use a little bit more purple here. Um, because I, my lamp that I have on here, I don't have a ring light in my makeup room where I do my actual makeup. Okay, I have an old lamp and it's super crusty and old looking, but it functions a little bit like a flashlight. It has the same kind of intensity. Um, it's washing out a considerable amount of the color that I put on. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. I'm just adding purple. And then I'm gonna go over that purple again with that nasty looking gray to kind of dull it out, make it look a little sicker, okay? Let's go up that brow bone a little bit. All right, foul, gross, disgusting. Okay, so your next step, you're not gonna like it. Nobody likes it, nobody has a fun time while it's happening, okay? I want you to take a little bit of foundation or concealer or whatever creamy or liquid makeup that you have, you're gonna get the tiniest little bit. I'm talking, where's the camera? This much, it's so small, okay? And you're gonna put it between two of your fingers like this. I'm gonna tap, 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 okay? and you're gonna put it on your lips. And it is, and literally put it on the edge of your lips like this and tap so that it blends into your skin and also goes over your lips. There is nothing that makes people more uncomfortable than looking at dehydrated lips. And that's this is gonna dry out your lips really, really, really bad, okay? So if you do this for your show, when your show is over, take it off and put on some chapstick because it is not gonna be fun, okay? Now, my lips are always chapped because I'm an anxious person and I pick at them and I don't drink enough water, okay? But this really fouls it up. Um, it also makes your teeth look yellower, okay? So once again, we're leaving vanity at the door. We don't wanna look good anymore. Um, and then you can just put a little bit of gray that gray eyeshadow. I'm just doing a little bit. It adds a little bit of color back into your lips, but like not the good kind. Don't worry about matching the line of your lips. I'm going a little bit over on mine. Gross. Disgusting. Okay. Now, if you have mascara, this is great. Put a little bit on your eyelashes. It makes your eyes look more like focused, more vivid, more intense, okay? Um, I'm not looking for fake eyelashes. You don't want falsies here. You don't want eyelash extensions. You don't want magnetic lashes. You don't want any of these, nothing. You just want to darken that little bit around your eyes smidge, okay? And then you're gonna put the mascara back in the tube. Take it out, get the little bit of product off of the bottom. And you're literally just going to press it, press into your bottom, like right below your bottom lash line. It's gonna leave those dark mascara marks, okay? And then take your finger and just smear a little. This is the closest thing that you're gonna wanna do to like eyeliner. It's gonna intensify your eyes and it's gonna make your eyes look a little bit bigger. It's gonna make the whites of your eyes look whiter. That's gonna be scary in the dark. It's gonna unsettle people in the dark, but it also looks really haphazard. It looks like maybe you were crying. Maybe you've wiped at your eyes a little bit. That's the kind of realism that we want, right? Okay, so we've done all this. This is very basic stuff. This is a basic face, all right? Now, if we wanna get a little spicy, and I don't know if Mr. Verderber wants you to get a little spicy or anything like that. Let's, this is eyelash glue. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put that right there. Okay, 
We're gonna let this dry for a little bit. Okay. When that is about 80% dry, you're gonna go into your eyeshadow again. You can take some of that black. I know this isn't fully dry yet, but that's all right. You just put a little shadow over it. Not a lot, just a little bit. This black is too dark. Then you're gonna go into your gray, gray that out, gray it out here a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Go back into your purple. Get a little purple on it so it looks a little bruised. So it looks like a real bruise, okay? I don't know if any of you have ever had a split lip before, but when you get an actual split lip, it bruises all the way down to your actual mouth beyond just your lip, okay? You don't wanna just leave the mark at your lip, that's it. I'm leaving this dark because, excuse me, this is what we're gonna do. I'm getting out my handy dandy gallon of blood that I can never open because it's a childproof lock and I'm a child. Pour a smidge of blood into the cap. Please be careful when you work with blood. It looks crusty. Okay, do I have a brush for this? Yes, I do. Okay, take my little brush and I'm gonna use very little. And I'm just gonna tap there. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just a nice little swipe. And then a press, stay still and it's gonna run. There we go. Let's do one more, press. There we go. And if you wanna get a little bit crazy, get your brush, dip it in the blood, and then smack it. There you go. Now, obviously, you guys are gonna have different rules about whether or not you can do anything related to blood or what level of blood you can do. Obviously follow those rules. Do not follow my rules because my rule is always the more blood, the better. Um, keep it out of your mouth, keep it out of your eyes, keep it out of your nose. It is going to burn if you get it in your nose. It is going to really hurt if you get it in your eyes and it does not taste good and it should not be ingested. So do not put blood in your mouth, okay? Do as I say, not as I do. All right, so when you're done with all this, take your handy dandy headband off, whether or not it has bunny ears is irrelevant. Take down your hair, mine is unwashed, so I'm gonna look extra dark to worry for this. And then you're gonna wanna just uglify your hair, all right? If you've got long hair, ladies, the more you can work with, that's great, I love it, okay? What, however you normally part your hair, don't. Don't do it that way this time, okay? Flip it the opposite way, get it in your face a little bit, make the part really messy, get just whole chunks wherever the hell they wanna go. And then, when you're done with all that, you look like a whole crazy person. Yeah? <laughs> Okay, if you want to go really immersive with what you're doing, um, you can always put some makeup on your hands to make your hands look really dirty and disgusting. Obviously, um, it's going to be your face that is your number one priority. Okay, so let go of the idea of being pretty. Don't be pretty. Be gross. Yeah? Um, if... Mr. Rudurba decides that we need any sort of other tutorial that is more, I don't wanna say intense, but has other little tips and tricks and things like that, um, I'd be happy to make another one. Um, I will let him decide and good luck. Go be spooky.